Hello there, this is Nicholas Mangini again. I'm here to show you a MIPS assembly project written entirely in MIPS assembly. Uh, we're using PC SPIM to run our MIPS assembly, and the actual code is written, well, in Notepad. <laughs> Anyways, here we go. Open. Blackjack, open. Run. Yeah, I'll start from there. And here we go. So enter your name. All right. Plus, my name is Nick. All right. Here we go. Blackjack. What is your bet? Let's bet 125 bucks. All right. Ooh, look at those. You got ASCII art pictures all over the place. So our dealer's got a six and something, and we've got a jack and an eight. We should probably stay. So let's stay. Oh, they got 21. <clears throat> we lost. All right, let's play again. So what is our bet this time? How about 50? Two aces. Uh, let's hit, of course. King. Well, that's an awkward situation, so hit again. Four, uh, hit again. Why not? Aw, oh, we won over. Darn. We lost again. All right, let's play one more time. What is your bet? 321. That sounds good. 11. Oh, this is a perfect hit in the hand. Oh, look at that. We won. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. And as we can see, while I'm playing here, you bet some money. It gives you two cards as well as the dealer, as normal blackjack would. You have our nice blackjack table in between us. <clears throat> you can hit or stay, either way. So let's hit, and we gain an extra card. You can also... Yeah, then you just hit and stay until you're done, and the dealer finishes up. Oh, we were screwed from the start. Let's just keep betting some money. Oh, can't really do much with this. All right, let's get a hand where I can just get, grab a lot. Oh my gosh, we just won automatically. Well, well then. All right, so we can hit. Oh, we lost. Okay, so I, as you can see, displaying cards, showing you know, a working game. So let's quit. That was a lot of fun now, wasn't it? Now let's see some code. Oh yes, look at this beautiful code. So this game was made by me and my friend Dan. We were working in a group for the uh, for this course we were in. And <clears throat> as you can see, I kept a list here of just the registers and what I was using them for. You know, kept your player's name in register one, or register zero, rather. Uh, this the the current seed in register 1, a random card number in register 2, more another counter for more randomness in register 3, this is part of my algorithm for giving you random cards, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, register 4 I never actually used. Register 5 is your current money. Register 6 is your current bet. And register 7 is the original seed. As you can see for the pictures, I literally gave up a lot of spaces and just wrote them in an ASCII art. Uh, I imagine myself as not as, as a pretty good artist and uh, you know wrote some ASCII art for this game pretty much in the last two nights right before the project was due. But we have you know so let's show you how it's actually done. So we are, have all our strings up here well I call them strings. Uh, when I actually want to display the game board, we jump down to game board. We load up a four into the into the uh, first register here. Then we load up line one into the A zero register, sys call, and that displays this to the console screen. And then do the same for line two, same for line three, and so forth. At the end, we jump back. Now how this works is, we have game board here, now within here, we load up line 1, which loads up, you know, line 1. Beautiful. And then so forth and so on. At the end, we jump back to RA. Now where does RA come from? <coughs> the register RA. Let's go, here's when I print the game board. We print out the dealer's carts, and then we jump and link to game board. This jumps all the way down to game board, 
runs these lines of code, and then jumps back to RA. When you jump and link, let's see, when you jump and link, it throws this spot into this uh, program counter into the, what was it called, the RA? Yeah, the RA register. And so when you jump back to the RA register, you'll jump right back to where you were. Perfect. And then we print out the lower half. And these are all basic MIPS assembly commands. You know, print out your money. Uh, I highly commented it. You kind of kind of need to with assembly, or you'll just get lost. Uh, but uh, one last thing to show, because as you can see, I kind of know what I'm doing in this uh, in this MIPS assembly. Um, but the actual seed. Where did I set the seed? So seed, seed, seed. Oh, you know what? I'll make this easy. Seed. Hey, find seed. There we go. Okay. Okay. There we go. Now, my random function is all all of this. Now, let's go start with the random function first. <clears throat> now, normally, your random function, well, I mean, I pretty much I got this out of a book that I had read on how to do random functions, and it. It takes in a seed, it does a few math calculations to it, and then spits out another ran a pseudo random number, and then it makes it changes the seed into the next spot uh, in the memory. So basically, we have this long algorithm that we know what's coming next, but if we set the seed to a ran a pseudo random number, then this will give us a random outcome, you know, um, and then. So how I do it, I mark this down for myself. We go up here. I have the original seed saved, and then I have the next seed ready to go in register one. <clears throat> so whenever I use the seed, I then increment the seed and do run the function again. Um, as for getting the seed, that's an interesting part. Uh, most of the time, you would use well the time of existence of the C language, which is most most C compilers can can run that command for your initial seed. Um, that's as pretty much as random and pseudo random as you can get. Uh, other people will use like the current time or you know the current seconds, whatever. <coughs> In the current version of PC spin that we were supposed to use, they didn't have a time command. Instead I read up on it, and the time command was introduced in the following version of PC Spin. So I don't have it. So to kind of kind of create one out myself, what I did was when you enter your name at the very start, this was ingenious, I think. When you enter your name, I run through the, all of the characters, take their their ASCII art num their ASCII equivalents, add them together, and that's your seed. <laughs> That's as random as I can get. So whenever, whenever someone else plays, they enter a different name, you know, whatever their name is. Maybe they even misspell it, and that's a completely different random seed. Uh, that's as I thought that was a great idea. Um, and for a simple project like this, it was perfect. Now, something to note was, I kind of went overboard in this project. Uh, most people in the class actually made basic calculators and whatnot, and gave a big presentation. People were bored, sleeping in class, they didn't understand what was going on. No one really cared, the professor just laying in there, okay, whatever. I come up and I go, I made blackjack. And everyone goes, what? I go, alright, alright, what's her name? And everyone yelled out a few names, so I threw one down. Then they, uh, then I go, alright, alright, how much should we bet? People were yelling out numbers, put something down. And I go, alright, alright, alright. Now we've got a king and an ace. What do we do? Some people are yelling, hit, hit. Other people are yelling, stay, stay. I'm like, you know what? We're gonna stay because we're we're not stupid. So we stayed. We won the hand. Perfect. Next hand, we get a few more cards. People are yelling, hit. No, no, stay. The professor got up, started yelling, hit. And I go, oh, wow. And uh, so I, you know, continued the presentation. It was phenomenal. At the end of the day, we were actually me and my partner Dan actually won a candy bar for best presentation. It was fantastic. Anyways, that's just a little side story. But, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching my game. Uh, and where's the grip button? There it is. See ya.